Hey, welcome to Smoky Ribs. Today I'm going to be doing crawfish etouffee. Steve over at Stoked on Smoke Barbecue Bros requested this a few weeks ago, so I told him I would do it. And uh, so let's get started. Alright, just like any other Cajun dish, you always start with a good roux. I've got four tablespoons of oil and I've got four tablespoons of flour. We're going to mix this all in good and make us a roux. We're not going to go as dark as we did for the uh, gumbo that I did at Christmas time when I did the uh, rabbit and sausage gumbo. Tell you what, I might have a little bit more flour than what I thought. I'm going to add a little bit more oil to this. You want a smooth consistency. You don't really want it to clump up like that. Yeah, it's looking better. Anyway, we're going to go to about a peanut butter color. And one thing I've all, I always do is I season my roux from the get-go. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Go ahead and add a little bit of black pepper. Alright, a lot of people that make crawfish etouffee do not even use a roux. You know, etouffee means smothered. Uh, actually, in this case, it's smothered in onions. And uh, some people will use flour as a thickening agent without browning it off first, like I'm doing here. But with the roux, the, the cooking process gets rid of that flour taste and it actually adds uh, just a wonderful element as far as flavor goes to the dish. So we're going to brown this and uh, get it to the color we like. We'll be back. Okay, I think we're going to work with this color right here. It's kind of a light brown, about the color of peanut butter. All right, now into this, we're going to add one cup of yellow onion. And by the way, when you add these vegetables, it, it just kind of stops the browning process right in its tracks because it cools it off. Alright, we're also going to add in a half of a bell pepper. We're going to cook this until these vegetables release all of their water and start to get tender. Okay, we'll be back. Alright, we've been going about four or five minutes. Everything's looking about right. We're going to go ahead and add in about two cups of water. Add that in slowly. It's not clump up the, uh, the roux. What we're, what we're looking for on this etouffee is uh, kind of a thick sauce. You don't really want it real thin, you know, thinned out and soupy like a gumbo is. And it really takes on a whole unique unique flavor from a gumbo. It doesn't taste the same. Yeah, it starts with a roux just like a gumbo, but it has a different flavor all to itself. Alright, this is starting to thicken up nice, so we're just going to keep adding water slowly, a little bit at a time. Then we're going to add some more spices and veggies. We'll be back. 
Okay, I added those onions and bell peppers, so uh, we've got to add more seasoning for that. We're going to add more salt, and we're going to add more cracked pepper. This pepper has white peppercorns, black peppercorns, the red and the green. Okay, that should be good. Now into that, you want to add in about a tablespoon of paprika. You want to add in two bay leaves. All right, now we we want to add in just a little bit of cayenne. You can do this to your own taste. Okay, I've had this simmering for a little while here. You want to make sure that your uh, onions and your bell pepper has a chance to get fairly tender before you ever put the crawfish tails in because the tails are fully cooked. They really don't need to cook that long. We're going to dump the whole pound of crawfish tail tails. This also has the fat from the crawfish as well, which adds an awesome flavor. So we're going to stir those in. Okay, let this come back to a simmer. Let this go for 20-30 minutes. Like I said, you want to make sure the onions and the bell peppers are, are tender. And uh, even though these crawfish tails are pre-cooked, go to another 30 minutes are not going to hurt them. Unlike shrimp, they don't really get tough and rubbery. So we're good. Uh, here, in just a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and add garlic, green onion, and parsley to this mix. We'll be back. Okay, I haven't done the parsley, uh, garlic, and green onion yet. This is starting to get a little on the thick side. I mean, it's not bad, but I'm going to thin it out just a little bit because this has to cook and steam, and it's going to reduce some. And what I'm going to add to it this time is not water. I'm going to add clam juice, probably a half a bottle. Yeah, let's start with that. This, too, is going to add just another excellent flavor to this. Yeah, stir this in, and we'll be back. People, you would not believe the smell of this stuff coming out in my kitchen. Oh my God, this is going to be good. I haven't made this in a long time. But since Steve requested me do this, I'm like, well, heck yeah. I don't know why I haven't made it in a long time. I forgot how good this stuff was. All right, now we're going to put in one cup of green onions. I use the uh, white ends of those as well. We're going to go ahead and toss in. I guess I got maybe two tablespoons of garlic here and a couple tablespoons of parsley. Gonna mix this all in. We're just gonna let it simmer until everything gets good and tender. Flavor is only gonna concentrate and get better. And if it gets too thick, just thicken it up with a little bit more of that clam juice. It's not gonna hurt it. Or you could use water. That clam juice does add a nice element to it though. All right. Start this, start this all in. We got a nice simmer going on here. Just let it simmer uncovered, thin out as necessary. Oh my lord, that smells good. Just wanted to also say that uh, if you decide to make this and if you have to order your crawfish online, make sure you get the Louisiana crawfish, the USA product. There is just such a difference in the flavor of these compared to the Chinese knockoffs. And uh, it just wouldn't be the same without it. So keep that in mind. Yeah, they're a little on the prices side. I paid uh, $16 for this one pound bag at my local grocery store. But if you order them online, you're going to expect to pay a little bit more than that plus shipping. But oh, it's so worth it. Okay, 
I just did a little taste test. It's just about perfect. I'm going to add a little bit more salt because of the parsley and the green onion and garlic that I put in there. Just a sh few shakes. A little bit more pepper. And we're going to leave it alone for right now. All right, we're coming along real good here. This is just about ready. I'm going to do one thing to it at the very end, which I'll show you when that time comes. I just started me a pot of rice back here on the back. You can use any kind of rice you like. I always prefer either Uncle Ben's or Zadaran's converted rice. And I think one reason for that being, it turns out perfect every time. It never sticks together. It's just really good rice, I believe, anyway. So we'll be back. Okay, <clears throat> we're right here at the end of this coat. This is perfect. This stuff is just so good. You would not believe the smell. But one final thing that I'm going to do to it is I'm going to add around three tablespoons of butter and just a little bit of cream, heavy cream. What this is going to do is give it a real smooth and silky texture. Once all this incorporates the butter and the cream into this etouffee, it's going to give it a very nice smoothy texture, shine, fill. Oh my god, this is going to be so good. I've got the oven warming up. I've got some French bread with a garlic uh, spread on top. So we're going to have garlic bread with this also. So I'll show you the end result here very soon. Well, we got it all plated up. Let's give it a try. Mmm, if it tastes anything like it smells, it's going to be good. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, man. People, if there's any way you can get a, get a hold of some crawfish, you got to try this. This is so good. Got some uh, garlic bread with it. Awesome. Till next time, smoke.